And this is the story of the week, as far as I'm concerned, um, which is not covered by many uh, news apart from um, Squat Box have, have covered this. Um, we've got uh, uh, Nick Mick Napier um, was arrested uh, this week uh, for for supposedly supporting a terrorist group, and uh, the police came to arrest Tony uh, Greenstein as well this week um, for a similar um, charge of of supporting a terrorist group. Now I'm going to I'm 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 um, I'm really chuffed that both Mick and Tony are. On the call, how are you doing? How are you doing, Mick? Uh, good, thank you, Crispin. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'll just get Tony on as well, and then, uh, and then you can, um, we can see who's the most attractive. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm not sure. Well, that we'll do a vote later. Um, uh, uh, Mick, um, can you tell us what happened? What happened in your situation? How you were arrested, and what did you? What was it for? Yeah, we had a big demonstration. What did you say? What What are you supposed to have said or, or done that that that, that yeah. caused this? I can tell you exactly. Um, we had a big demonstration as so many as around so many places in Britain eight days ago in Glasgow, when I was MC in it. And uh, during my talk, I thanked Hamas for winning the election in Palestine some years ago. Um, and therefore exposing the duplicity and hypocrisy of the British government when it came to their commitment to democracy. I then went on uh, publicly, and I'm, I saw the cops taking notes, to thank Hamas for breaking out of the Gaza concentration camp on October the 7th. I said anybody in their situation would do it. I said that uh, they were slated, that the Palestinians in Gaza were 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 scripted to die in Gaza. Their children were going to die in Gaza if everything had been quiet, and their grandchildren would have died in Gaza. Uh, an hour later, uh, while the demonstration was inside Central Station, a very vigorous and dynamic uh, protest, I was waiting outside because I'm barred from attending any protest of any kind anywhere in Scotland, um, any, any, any moving protest. Uh, two big cops came, grabbed me, frog-marched me into a police van, put me in a small cage at the back, told me I was being arrested for religiously aggravated offence, which rather puzzled me. And I was then taken to the cop shop, detained for a few hours, and charged with uh, offences under Terrorism 2000. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um it was a very public event. It's recorded on video. I more or less repeated the same words when we went to uh, Glasgow Sheriff Court on Tuesday when I was outside on the steps. There was a very large demonstration of solidarity. Um, and that's where we are. So I think it's important to talk about the Palestinian right to resistance. Not that I support Hamas, not at all. But the Palestinians have an inalienable right to resist what Israel is doing to them. And I think it's important to get that out into the public discourse. So I've been arrested and charged due in court on the 9th of January, and we'll take it from there. But for me and for the for, for Scottish PSC, it's not a diversion from solidarity. It's an opportunity to talk about what's happening in Gaza today, tomorrow, and what's been happening there for the last 75 years. Yeah, excellent. I mean, it sounds like what Palestine actually sense. are doing in their case, where they're they're bringing up the issues there. Well, we're um, obviously inspired, Crispin, by what they do. Yeah. Now, Tony, are you are you are you there, or your signal's gone? Uh, are you there, Tony? Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, can you tell us your your uh, about your arrest? I mean, yours was early in the morning. I mean, how are you at that time? Well, I don't, I'd only just gone to bed. Oh, uh, right, so okay. I was particularly sleepy. I'd been doing a blog on how terrible Sharon Graham is of Unite and how she refused to talk about Palestine at all or the genocide or anything else in contradiction uh, to Unite policy, which is very good. Uh, and uh, I heard the tinkle of my doorbell, so I answered it. And there were these two men there. Uh, one in a kind of crumpled grey ill-fitting suit who told me that they were arresting me on suspicion of having committed an offence 
uh, under the Terrorism Act, and uh, it was about support, my support for the Palestinians and support for Hamas. They didn't seem to make any distinction. My only comment at that stage was that this is Orwellian. Uh, as you can understand, I was pretty sleepy and, uh, you know, I was just trying to take it in, really. But uh, uh, soon other cops came. Uh, they came into my place. I wasn't in a position to resist them, as you might imagine. Uh, they uh, allowed me to get dressed and... Uh, then I was taken out to a waiting van, really. Uh, they locked the door. Uh, they got my medication, in fact, uh, but then said they would be back to search it later, which they did. And they took my computer, both computers, uh, both uh, mobile phones, external disk drives. So, I mean, I spent two days just really getting back online because you need your mobile phone these days to get onto yeah. your inter your email when they do verification checks and so on. So it was a yeah. fairly long and inexpensive business as well. But uh, that that is the least of the problem. But, uh, I mean, the main thing about it is, is this is a real attack on freedom of speech. I mean, I, I tweeted. I mean, uh, it was all over one tweet. I, I replied to a Zionist who said, just tweet, I support Hamas. So I replied... I support the Palestinians. That is enough. But then I went on to say, and I support Hamas against the Israeli army. And that in itself was deemed sufficient in terms of support for Hamas, a prescribed organisation, uh, to warrant my arrest. One single tweet. Uh, my solicitor doesn't think there's much of a case there, but uh, we shall see. But uh, I'm bailed to appear back on March uh, the 20th. But I, I think the main, one of the main things anyway uh, about this is it, it is a fundamental attack on freedom of speech. Uh, and without freedom of speech, you're living in a police state. I mean, it, it's a basis of all our democratic freedoms. And this is under attack by the Zionists, the Zionist lobby, and a willing Conservative Party, aided, of course, by Keir Starmer. Uh, the idea that you can actually speak out about a group they may be prescribed. That in itself is very, very worrying because they weren't prescribed for terrorism. They were prescribed in essence because they don't fit into British foreign policy. Uh, and that is the nub of it, to be quite honest. Uh, I mean, if you go to, I mean, I've done a blog last night, so do read it. Uh, the justification for prescribing Hamas's political wing is that in 2021, they fired rockets at Israel, no mention, of course, the other way around, and killed two Jewish children. Well, I mean, Israel has killed, what, 10,000 Palestinian children now? Israel should be prescribed 5,000 times over by that standard. But, of course, Palestinian lives do not matter. And that is the nub of it. Yeah. Uh, Mick, did they take your uh, phone and, and laptop too? I, I don't know that. No, they grabbed my phone, which was really tedious. Um, and as Tony says, it sets you back quite a bit because all sorts of codes and things that you can do with a flick of a you know touch of your finger, you can no longer do. So they've grabbed the phone. Um, but, you know, since I, I, I did a calculation on the back of a fag packet, Chris, but, and since 2009, my, I myself and other Scottish PSC members, in the last 14 years, we've had about 17 years of court time you know, charged with saying the words stop the siege of Gaza, saying the words genocide, uh, fake assault charges, which are always thrown out when you get to court, and various other stuff. It never ends. So this is just the latest example of trying to suppress Palestine voices. And, of course, it's not going to work. I mean, the idea is to change the subject. By the way, I've still got a, another case coming up the day before one, this one comes up in, in March for defying COVID regulations when we had a big demonstration in 2021. Actually, the same week that David, that uh, Boris Johnson and his pals were having a bring your own booze party in, in Downing Street, we had a demonstration against Israeli massacres of May 2021. And <laughs> there's still an outstanding court appearance uh, for defying the COVID regulations. So it never ends. And it's all an attempt to, to, to intimidate, to harass. But you know, 
what Palestine Action faced was the possible uh, was possibly a few years in prison. What Palestinian journalists, a hundred of them, almost a hundred of them killed, is death when they do their job. What we face is low level petty harassment. You know, we all keep our fingernails. We don't normally get tortured by the cops unless you're young Muslim or working class from some part of London. So we, you know, we it's it the the the. The cost of resistance in this country at the moment for many of us is extremely modest and we all have to do it. Basically, Crispin, if, if there is a custodial sentence, it'll be fairly modest. Um, but I think really, given the genocide in Gaza, the horror that every one of your viewers experiences at a visceral personal level, given that Britain's a sort of heroin addict of aggression against other countries, invading, attacking, pillaging, robbing, sometimes genociding the local people. We can't stop this through emails. We can't even stop it through elections, although they're important. I think we're going to have to fill the prisons at some stage in order to stop Britain being able to go from one atrocity, one genocide in Iraq to one in Libya to one in Iraq and, and back to Palestine You know, from time to time. We're going to, we're going to have to really think about this um, because how do we stop it? I think we face the prospect of the British or the American jackboot descending forever on the neck of people around the world unless we reflect on our serial failure to, to, to prevent the devastation of, of countries in the Middle East and beyond. That's uh, well, very well put. Um, Tony, uh, just, um, just to finish on, on, on this, uh, what, what's, your, what's your view on, on what Mick just said about the, the fact that they're just harassing people. I mean, you seem to be getting that as well all the time. I mean, the the, the thing about anti-Semitism was thrown at you for a long time, and now they've that doesn't seem to work. So they're just calling you a terrorist supporter now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a complete abuse, of course, of the Terrorism Act. I mean, I presume the Terrorism Act was introduced in 2000 to combat terrorism. What they're now doing is redefining support for the Palestinians as in itself an act of terrorism, and that is a very uh, slippery shift which uh, has to be resisted, of course. Uh, but, I mean, Mick is correct. I mean, I can't complain about their treatment of me in the custody centre. I mean, they were perfectly polite. They didn't take my fingernails out, as he said. Uh, and compared to what people are suffering in Gaza, it's absolutely minute. It's an inconvenience. It's an annoying inconvenience. But... Uh, they're a, a difference of magnitude. But what they fear is the solidarity movement, which has grown up in this country and in the West. And they want to take out what they perceive uh, as the nastier wing of the solidarity movement. That is those of us who believe in direct action and those of us who are not willing to uh, support two states and mumble all, all the slogans that people do like this is a complex thing and so on i mean i was interviewed and my solicitor said just reply with no comment and i said no i'm gonna i'm gonna answer your questions and explain exactly why uh, i did what i did and I, they said well you said you support hamas in the war against israel and i said yep yeah, that's absolutely true i would have supported the devil if he'd been fighting against Israel, I would support anyone who was fighting against Israel. It's the Palestinian resistance, whether they're Hamas or anyone else. And that is the important thing. I don't support Hamas as an organization politically because they're an Islamist organization and I'm not an Islamist. But I do support them as part of the Palestinian resistance unconditionally. Uh, and I'm very pleased that they're putting up a very stiff fight against uh, Israel's uh, murderous uh, uh, soldiers and army now. Uh, and, and that needs to be really said. I mean, I one of the conditions of my bail is not to go on to Twitter and post anything about the conflict. Well, I've weighed that up and decided uh, I will interpret that li liberally uh, because I'm not going to be silenced, uh, which is the purpose, really, of these, uh, these raids and these arrests. Mm. It is to shut you up, uh, and I refuse to be shut up. We have a legal right to speak out, especially at a time like this. Uh, yeah. And no stupid coppers uh, are going to stop us. Uh, and whatever the Tory government uh, wishes, uh, again, 
it's very interesting. I mean, if you go to my blog, I, I pointed out how the Terrorism Act, Section 12, was amended by the Counter-Terrorism Act in 2021. And it's an extremely slippery amendment because it says really that anything you say which is supportive of Hamas is in itself an offence. Or if you're reckless about the effect of what you said. So it's not even what you say. It's the fact that you don't you, you don't take into account the consequences as if you know what the consequences of speaking out can be. You, you don't have to intend to do something. Yeah. You're simply reckless, whatever that means. It, it, you know, it, it's a, a police state charter, really. And of course, yeah. the Labour Party didn't oppose the Counterterrorism Act. Starmer has supported all of this stuff. So well, again, uh, we have to fight uh, back. Uh, well, look, th thank you. Thank you both for coming on. Very heroic of you. Thank and, you. Uh, and we'll, we'll support you all the way, um, whether that means we go to jail or not. I mean, we'll, we'll be... Uh, We'll be with you. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, Mick. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank sure, you. Thank you.